I'm going to be building a Epi DLG soon and in order to figure out what receiver I wanted to use I wanted to do a little testing with the servos and see how low of a voltage either the FreeSky X4R or the D4R2 if one of them could go lower than the other since on the packaging the D4R2 is rated down to three and a half volts whereas the X4R is rated down to four volts so I figured I have this variable volt tester that I can use and power it with a LiPo, adjust the voltage a little bit and see how low we can get these receivers to drop out at and what happens with the telemetry when the voltage gets really low. Also I'll keep the servo plugged in so I can do some testing to see how well the servo responds. Okay here we have the servo hooked up to channel 1. We've got the power hooked up on channel 4. We've got the receivers already bound for the D4R2 and we've got it plugged in to my voltage regulation system here that's set currently to 5 volts and once I power this on we'll be able to start dropping voltage and see how long it stays connected. Telemetry recovered of signal critical. Running at a nice stable 5 volts we can actually set it lower We can drop it down to 4 volts, stays connected, drop down to 3 volts, still connected, drop it down to 2 volts, ah, we've definitely lost connection here. So what happens, how far do I have to bring it up to get it to connect? To one, not quite. To two, not quite. To three, four. Seems at two five we get restored connection here. Not much power on the servo. Telemetry recovered. Ah, and telemetry comes back. At least RSSI telemetry must come back. It seems that voltage telemetry only goes down to about 3.3 .3 volts. Yeah, radio still shows 3.3 .3 volts for voltage. Three point five. Definitely notice a speed change in the servo. So it seems about three point five volts is a pretty safe cutoff and that's pretty good for a 1S operation. So let's go ahead and test the X4R receiver and see what we get. Here we have the X4R receiver. We've got the servo plugged into channel 2. We've got the power on the S-Bus port. It's currently set to 3.5 volts. I'm going to go ahead and turn that up a little bit. We'll start at 4 volts and we know that's the package rated low voltage cutoff. So let's go ahead and drop that below and see how low it'll go. So one difference between the X4R and the D4R, the D4R uses A1 telemetry for the voltage on the receiver. The X4R has a different value called RX bat for receiver battery and that will tell you what the current voltage is on the on the receiver. So you do have to make settings changes other than just the protocol in the Tyrannus in order to get the right telemetry back. So now we can start dropping voltage and see what happens.
So again, it sees, seems like the voltage cutoff on the radio is about 3.3, 3.4 volts, but the connection still stays solid. Let's keep going. Telemetry lost. There it is. Telemetry recovered. So it'll go down to 2.6 volts before it cuts. That's pretty good. At that point your 1S LiPo is very well drained and uh, quite possibly damaged. So I think the um, X4R2, X4R receiver and the D4R2 receiver either will make great 1S application receivers. Uh, personally I think I'm going to install the X4R in my Epi simply because it's the newer version, runs on the newer protocol and I'm just not really, uh, no reason other to, other than that. What are you doing, cat? 